All right, good uh, evening, everybody from the. Uh, well, it's not from a controller scope, really, but uh, or even a flight deck. But uh, good evening from the Microsoft Flight Simulator menus, I guess. <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody to another live stream. Just going to try and get my other computer just a little bit closer so I can see the chat channel on there as well. Uh, sometimes I can see it on this screen, sometimes I can't. So uh, I have it on another screen as well, just so I can uh, I can see if I am distracted. So uh, welcome everybody to a, another live stream with me, Captain Nabs, and uh, we are in the home stretch now. So uh, for those of you that have not caught the last couple of live streams I've been doing. We are in, uh, we are using, or we're doing the uh, bush trips in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're doing the Patagonia bush trip. So uh, I've been doing this, I've done this uh, pretty much the whole month of February. So uh, I've done three streams so far, and we've gotten uh, legs one through ten done of those streams. Uh, so we are now on to legs 11, 12, 13, and 14. And as you can see, they're not long here. So 14 minutes, 11 minutes, 27 minutes, 17 minutes. In total, uh, today we're going to do like 130 miles so this is going to take us maybe a little more than an hour hour and a half tom and gt good evening uh yeah i'm 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 well how are you um i i it's been uh, it's been a good couple days it's been a good couple weeks i just uh just had an old buddy just reach out to me and uh, and uh, invite me to his uh, birthday next uh, next month, which is just great because uh, I don't get a chance to go out all that often anymore. It seems like I'm always on the opposite schedule of everybody, which is really frustrating. So um, I'm really kind of looking forward to that. So that that that's uh, that's something nice, you know. It's it's just nice to get together with with really old friends and and life just gets in the way of doing that these days so uh looking forward to that uh but yeah overall things are good um just did a uh a couple of minutes later than i wanted to be for the start of the stream just because i was helping out with uh uh in uh controller examination on batson so in toronto they just had uh, a controller just uh try to get his uh, c1 rating his uh, on route control rating and uh so we we we, we were kind of uh, we were kind of evil there was four of us uh, controllers that got together and started from different airports and all flew to the same airport all flew to Timmins and aimed to be there at the same time so he had two airplanes in the hold he's trying to get a third one in VFR and another one's cleared for the approach it's just like <laughs> just try just making his life absolute hell so uh, it went a little, I was the last one in the hold so uh, the trip took longer than I expected so I, I had to do a, a quick reset of my sim because I, I I have a basic rule when I stream is that I reset everything in the sim I, I reboot my computer i restart the sim uh you know start fresh because you just don't know what's running sometimes still on your computer that you you ran in the last day or two and uh microsoft light simulator strains my computer a bit it really does it's it, it runs and it runs pretty well and especially with the basic aircraft it runs pretty well but it does strain my computer a bit and just when you're streaming you don't want to leave stuff to chance i had <laughs> i think it was the very first uh, episode of this series where we did the first couple of uh, legs uh, for Patagonia. I booted the sim, and as soon as it started the airplane, the sim crashed. And that was a fresh, fresh reboot anyway, so it's not that it's going to prevent it, but I think it does kind of decrease the odds of a sim crash. If, so when I'm going to do a flight like that, I think it's important enough to me, uh, and certainly live streaming, I try to always reboot my sim, reboot my computer before I even do that. Reboot my computer before I even restart the sim. Just make sure everything's fresh, nothing's running that doesn't need to be running in the background. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so we're going to do these four legs today uh, in the uh, X-Cub, and uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, after that, we're going to be done. We're going to get the achievement, and we're going to move on to next month. Uh, we're going to we're gonna resume a pilot's life. Unless you guys have any other suggestions for stuff you might want to see me stream. Um, but I'm going to go back to doing a pilot's life for, for another season or so. Uh, it's looking good. And uh, for those of you that didn't get the news, before I even get into this, just one super exciting piece of news. Um phoenix announced this afternoon and it's funny because i was actually chatting with some buddies and literally while we're chatting he's like oh there was just a post in the phoenix discord and phoenix announced that uh version or block two of version two is going to release they, they said it's not going to the the time frame has gone from months and weeks to hours so tomorrow the phoenix uh the, the new version of the phoenix version two of block two is going to release it's going to have the uh iae engines it's going to have all this stuff that they showed off in the last video com uh compressor stalls if you do crosswinds engine damage if you do stall your engine repeatedly and don't recover the stall the engine compressor stall uh fan uh fan blade icing and ice shedding procedures are going to be required now hot starts on on the iae engines all that good stuff and and so much more uh so many of the fixes that they're talking about uh i believe they said that they're also 
uh, working on more tightly integrating GSX into Phoenix now, so that basically GSX and Phoenix will talk to each other, play nicely without the need for a middleman. Uh, so Phoenix to GSX, will it be redundant? Maybe, maybe not, because at the end of the day still, I liked Phoenix to GSX because it automated the whole GSX process. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, as soon as I loaded the flight plan, it would automatically call for catering, call for fuel. When the fueling was done, it would automatically start boarding. I could accelerate the boarding start. I could I could hit a button to accelerate boarding start, but all that stuff would happen without my input, which is the way it happens in the real world. Pilots don't sit there and say, okay, board now. Okay, call me the fuel truck. No, the dispatcher sends a fuel order off to the fuel company and they send the fuel truck over. So all that Phoenix GSX stuff, all the automation, that's where it really shines. It's just like all this, it's, it's all this great animation that GSX has, but you don't have to call for each part of it individually. It just, it all happens automatically. And I, I love it. Like, as soon as you turn the beacon off at arrival, boom, the jet bridge starts moving towards the aircraft. They get, as soon as the jet bridge is connected, they start unloading. Like, all that stuff happens without the pilots having to say something. So I love that. I love that level of automation. So I don't know what kind of integration. I know they were talking about tightening the integration. I don't know what they're going to do, but Phoenix to GSX may still have a place if, if, it, if you still have to manually trigger stuff. Anyways, super excited about that, and uh, I'm going to definitely download that as soon as it comes out and probably try flying around the 320 a little bit tomorrow just for fun. And uh, I think, uh, and I'm hoping that this means that now, like, the next big thing for... Uh, the next big thing for the Phoenix is going to be the release of the 319 321 pack, uh, which is going to be a day one purchase for me. I just can't wait to get my hands on the 321. I think it really is the culmination. I mean, it's it's not a great performer, but it's, it's such a heavy hauler. It's it's the culmination of the of the Airbus narrow body family. So. I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping that this means that progress is being made. It does mean progress is being made. Something's happening. So hopefully the 319, 321 will come out before the next season of A Pilot's Life finishes because I would love to fly that around and show you guys the 321 as well as the 319. Uh, dropping to minus 30 tonight in Winnipeg. Ooh, that is frigid. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, and it was crazy today. There's big thunderstorms in Toronto today. All right. Anyways, I'm going to start this sim up here. Uh, gave up on GSX. And I've had people say that. And I've given up on GSX from time to time. It can be finicky. Uh, it, it can be very finicky software. I'll 100% grant you that. Um, but uh, I think... Uh, I think it's 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 worth it. It, it. Again, it was a bit finicky too when when MSFS when it sort of first came out in MSFS. But I have to say, it's gotten pretty. I won't say bulletproof because it definitely can still kind of it can still glitch out for sure. It does glitch out, uh, but I it's not terrible. It, it definitely most of the time works, and especially the with the Phoenix, it does most of the time it works. Look at this little tiny airstrip here. This thing is crazy. This is it. This is all we're doing here. All right. Let me know how you think that background volume is there. I think I might turn it up just a notch there, or what I might do is just turn up my headphones a little bit instead so I can hear it. There we go. Now I can hear it a little better. All right. And, uh, yeah, so here we are back in the X-Cup again. For some reason, I don't have... There we go, avionics. All right, and I just realized, of course, as always, that I've forgotten to change my... Um, uh, my Bravo. I actually changed the handles, but I didn't when did it when the sim wasn't running, so I wasn't thinking about piston single. So I have to go back and do that. And so we'll just do a quick little test here and just test the throttle. Throttle's good. Props good. Mixture's good. All right. As always, I'm gonna turn off the turn up the uh, light in here because I just feel like it's with this overcast. It's just a little bit too dark in this flight deck. So let's turn all that up, and we're gonna get rid of this map here there we go get rid of the map there all right so the trims reset flaps can go to one there we go and i think we've got everything just about set up berto has a slightly unorthodox idea of customer support <sighs> yeah I, I i i think i know what you're saying and i yeah he he's a bit of a prickly pear i think is the, is the polite way to say it he's he's a bit of a prickly pear and, and and I get I get it a lot of the time with a lot of these developers. It's like they get people complaining that something doesn't work, and it's because their add-on's not compatible with some other add-on. But if every developer out there had to test every add-on with every other add-on, uh, they'd never release anything. There's just so much, so many different things you can put in the sim and put together. So I, I yeah, I, I, I 
I, I do tend to think of his customer service sometimes as being a little bit grumpy as well. Um, but sometimes people, uh, he's also, he's a very small shop. I, I, get, I, I feel like he's pretty much almost a one man show. And supporting products like that, especially popular products, like it requires a whole lot of uh, resources. Anyways, let's do this thing. Let's get this going here. We can talk more as we go. All right. So, uh, Rocky Outcrop travel north from the airport to the shoreline of a vast lake, Laguna O'Higgins. Head directly northeast across the water from the shoreline. You should see an outcropping just before reaching the base of the mountains on the opposite shore of the lake. Make your way there. All right. So, all right. Make sure the parking brake is off. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go straight ahead. And I might just sort of step on the pedals a little bit as I do this here. I don't want it to nose over on me, but at the same time, it's actually a pretty short runway. So we wanna make sure we reach an appropriate speed and get off the ground relatively quickly on this thing here. actually climb pretty steeply to not overspeed the flaps. <laughs> Which is the other fun part. Alright, and this leg is how long? It's 3 minutes and 13 seconds. So we got a couple seconds here, and we're already at 2300 feet when we... 2300 feet now. Get those flaps up. And uh, we'll just go to 3000. I don't think we need to go any higher than 3000 here. Pair, very diplomatic. I, I don't. I hate to disparage people too much because he does put a lot of work into his scenery. But you're right. The customer service sometimes it's a little lacking. It's a little discouraging. Well, it works fine on my system, and, and yeah, and, and, and again, I get it. I get it. Like developers, you know, they can't test on every permutation on every system, every other add-on to work with. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It. it I, I, I feel his pain. But yeah, I, I feel the pain as a, as a customer as well. It's like, I feel like you're not supporting your customers very well sometimes. All right, so looks like we go straight ahead. There is a rocky outcropping on the other side of the lake. I do like GSX functionality too. And there's, there's certain things I like about it. There's certain other things that are kind of covered by, there's certain things that are covered by other um, sim products. Uh, you've built into the simulator itself. You know, the jetways themselves are built into the sim itself. Uh, the uh, catering and fuel and all that is kind of built into the sim itself. What I really find GSX is, uh, what GSX does that is unparalleled, that nobody else really does, I find, uh, at least not as well, is the interactivity of the pushback experience. So the the way they push back to a certain spot and, and, and it auto detects like where's their where's their taxiway and it does you know tail tail right or tail left onto the taxiway um, and and the whole that whole process is really good. Um, I use Pushback Express for a while, but I just I just like the way again I like the realistic experience and to me the the way it, it, it yeah GSX lacks the voice control and that's unfortunate. Wow, she's a little bumpy up here. Um, yeah, she's a little bit, uh, she's a little bit bumpy. She's a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. I just, this is just a little bit taller. I think I adjusted this a little bit too low. Um, oh, come on, stop climbing. How much do I have to trim you down? Okay, uh, make your way east towards the mountainous peninsula. All right, so let's do this again here. All right. Where's the mountainous peninsula? I'm guessing it's that one. Two minutes and twelve seconds. Jobby, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get it trimmed out here for a level flight and it just won't stop climbing. It won't stop climbing and it won't stop being choppy too. Alright, anyways, we're heading to this rocky outcropping. We're gonna turn east and go to that mountainous peninsula. Uh yeah. I, I liked I, I, I was used to push back and press for a while and I liked the voice the voice control. That that is that is really great, but the overall process where it really just like it GSX guides you to a certain spot, and without a whole lot of extra input from you, you just t t say tail right or tail left, which is how it is in the real world. That's the thing. It's like in the real world, we just say usually tail right or tail west or something like that, and it goes to that spot. 
and the other side of it too, the other side of the equation is the marshalling in because you can select any gate you want and that's that's the problem with the default simulator is it only like it'll put a marshaller just a couple of random gates across the airport but it may not be the gate you want to be at so it's those two ends of the equation that make um, that make uh, GSX really superior product to me and again it, it it's it has its glitches it absolutely does I'm not gonna say it's a perfect product it definitely has problems from time to time some and it's funny because like it's so kind of random some days it'll be flawless from start to finish I use it exactly the way it was intended to be used and and it's fine and then there's other days where it's just like it's like pulling teeth you try to reset it six times and it doesn't really do anything uh, yeah so it, that, that that's the funniest thing I think about GSX is that it is it's very much it's hit or miss some days it'll just work perfectly the whole day I'm just gonna drop down to 2,000 feet now that we're over kind of this body of water here and other days it just I don't know hey you just nothing you seem to do but wants to make it work properly and then what then you, you might get it to work at the end of the day for a little while but then it needs a constant reset and it's just it's so random all right just to turn northeast, skirt along the rocky shoreline until you reach the northernmost point of the peninsula. So, there, I think. Yeah, if, if GSX were a little bit more reliable, it would be a fantastic product. Pushback Express, I can't even remember how, I, I can't even remember what we used to have to do. Do you have to tell it to turn left and right? I think we did, right? And it, it kind of works, but it's distracting when you're starting engines in the middle of the pushback. The ground crew should be pushed back without your input. I love the voice interactivity, and, and, and the voice interactivity was really kind of hard to give up because I think Pushback Express was first to the first to the market. I think GSX was kind of all right. So I'm going to assume that this is the peninsula right here, and they want us to turn and follow this coast back northeast down here. in order to turn northeast, it's got to be this way. I should pull the power back just a little bit for that. I'm going to probably go left around this because I may not top this ridge here at 2,000 feet, so we'll just keep going left around the ridge, try not to hit it. Yeah, it's, it's a pity the GSX is inconsistent. But then again, I'll say this, and I don't know if you found it with Pushback Express. I, I, I can't even remember because I haven't really used Pushback Express in a while, not to be honest. Um, but I will say this about like FS2 Group. It's also temperamental in MSFS, more so than I think it ever was in the P3D era. Temperamental. Some days it works, some days it just gets hung up somewhere along the line. And, and that's unfortunate because, again, it's, it's a fantastic product, and if it worked reliably 100% of the time, it would be just wonderful. But I would say probably about 20% of the time when I use uh, FS2 Cruise, something glitches out at some point. Some voice command doesn't get recognized. Uh, it gets hung up in some checklist or something or some procedure somewhere. And it happens probably about 20% of the time. In MSFS, it was almost bulletproof. And that's what I liked about it. I liked that in MSFS you could really kind of, uh, the way the options were set up in FS2 Crew, you could really, uh, what am I trying to say? You could kind of, you could skip to a different part of the flight very easily. There was there was a menu basically, and you could say, this is, a, a, I'm at the after takeoff phase. And you could skip to that and just, just be at that point without having to necessarily worry about a voice trigger. So if something glitched out at some point, you could just kind of move forward with it anyways. Whereas with the MSFS iteration, it's no longer really an option. All right, to the north, you should see a long water channel ahead of you. Make your way ahead of you and make your way down its eastern coast. You should soon pass a river running into the lake from the Portering Mountains. All right, so yeah, this is to uh, Mountains Peninsula North 157. Yeah, this is about right here. I just love like the, the, the ripples on the water, like. It just absolutely amazing. Alright, 
that should be good enough there. So let's go ahead and do this turn here, Mountain River. So uh, two minutes and 49 seconds, we should see a river coming down from the eastern coast. Just pinch up ever so slightly, a little bit of back pressure in the turn. It's not an Airbus, it's not gonna do it for you. Uh, you gotta do this sort of thing by yourself. All right, so this is gonna be the eastern coast. We are pretty much yeah, heading due north at this point. Definitely back into some very rugged mountain terrain, and I'm not sure, I think we're back in Argentina now. Or are we in Chile? I think we're in Argentina. It's funny, I, did, I was looking at this the other day. Uh, I was got a little bit curious about this trip and everywhere that we'd been in it. So I went and I checked it out on Google Maps, and uh, yeah, we crossed that border between uh, Chile and Argentina like, four or five different times like we started out I think we started out in Argentina and then by the time we got to the third little grass trip we were in Chile and then uh, stayed in Chile for a little while then Argentina again and it's like they, they, the border kind of came back and forth through the through the mountains uh, pretty pretty regularly all right at least I think I've got it mostly trimmed she's gaining and losing altitude ever so slightly but it's not too bad at this point Alright, we should be able to make it over this little hill here. Uh, Alright. To the north. You should soon pass a river running into the lake from the bordering mountains. So there is a river. There's rivers everywhere running into the lake. But I would assume if they want us to go up the eastern side, they'd want us to look for a river on the eastern side, which looks like it's going to be here water. Continue north, you'll soon pass a pool of water on the shoreline of the lake. Okay. So we're going to stick to the eastern shoreline because that seems to be what they wanted us to do here. Forest shoreline. This is very descriptive again. <laughs> Alright, but we're going to make it here. Alright. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep up the nighttime streams with the pilot's life because it just ended up being a little bit too long. But uh, actually, the first episode of the new season that we're gonna do, I think, is actually gonna be kind of fun uh, because it's for the first time in quite a while. It's gonna be a very short leg. Well, not very, but quite a short leg. All right. Maybe it's this one here. So to the north. Uh, make your way down the eastern coast. You should soon pass a river running into the lake from the bordering mountains. So maybe it's this one here because 249 is what we're at right here. Is there a... Oh, there is a river actually running through this valley here. So I'm going to call it this one here. I'm going to say when we're beating this river, that's what they're looking for. Uh, yeah, so the first uh, episode of season two is... Uh, of season two, of, of season like... I don't know, season 12 I think we're on. Um, is going to be a, uh, is going to be a double header. It's going to be two legs. So we are starting out in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We go over to Punta Cana and then right back to San Juan. And I would love to do this as a continuous stream. So I'd like to actually do a turnaround for once in the Airbus. Turn around, go back. All right. So there's the mountain river. Continue north. You'll soon pass a pool of water on the shoreline of the lake. Two minutes and thirty-five seconds. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm really kind of stro stoked for this. I was kind of, this is one of the things I was kind of really trying to look for in this uh, next season is trying to, f I was really trying to find a, um, uh, really trying to find like a couple of short legs where I would at least be able to do at least two legs back to back. And, and more than that, yeah, this is really, it is really nice. I should get rid of this for a minute here and just enjoy the scenery here because yeah, it is just beautiful out here. The, the, the trip came recommended by somebody and, and they were absolutely right. It, it's, it's absolutely a gorgeous little trip. It's not, and I do, I just, I, I do, I love being down low and slow and, and just, just enjoying the scenery. Uh, it's not something you do when you're IFR, you're spending your whole time like this. You're just staring at this thing, counting down the miles and thinking about what you're doing next. And yeah, just getting out there and actually seeing the scenery. And it's like, and it's funny because like, I, I, I fall for this. I very much fall for this. I, I use the sim mostly in my comfort zone. So I, 95% of the time, I fly in North America because that's what I'm comfortable with. And 
there's a whole swaths of the planet that I have not seen in the sim. I haven't even come close to seeing. I haven't gone within 10,000 miles of some parts of the sim. I have done a little bush. I did do one of the Australian bush trips, and that was really fun. So that kind of got me into Australia. But uh, I've I, I've almost never flown in Asia. I've done like a couple of FS economy flights in Africa, briefly in South America. Uh, I've done a little bit of flying in Europe, but really in MSFS, very, very little. Uh, I'm kind of waiting for the long haulers too, and, and I think that might change the equation for me a little bit if uh, if we can make it reasonable. Uh, one of the problems with the long haulers is just simply finding the time to do it uh, without, you know, wasting your entire day sitting there staring. That's kind of a weird shadow there. Um, so what I used to do anyways in, in I have some pool of water, so there's no pool of water here by this stream, but I wonder if up here on this kind of like, uh, it's like there's a little flattening here, I wonder if there's a pool here. Um, or even there, that might even be the pool of water there. There's a little pool of water right here. Maybe that's what they're talking about. It's not much. You should see a shoreline up ahead, and it is about the right time, so let's go ahead. Yeah, let's say that's it. You should see a shoreline up ahead holding a dense forest. Uh, holding a dense forest, keep heading north along the coast and make your way there. Alright, so we're going to reset because we just passed a beam that, so we're looking for, for two minutes and six seconds for a forest shoreline, and there is a bit of a dense forest here, and there's a bit more of a dense forest up here. Uh, just preparing to fly Rise Air King Air 350 on one of the northern Saskatchewan routes. Never heard of them until I found their delivery on the flightsim.to website. Uh, they have a two character Canadian domestic designator. I assume that is all I use for Vatsim. I've always. Used yeah, um, they must have a three character designator, but uh, best of luck trying to find it, in all honesty. Uh, you know, and I might even suggest, like, honestly, like Wikipedia. Uh, yeah. And they don't actually have an IATA call sign. Uh, RS. Uh, they must have a call sign. They must have a call sign. Call signs rise air. Have you tried looking even on FlightAware to see if you can find it on FlightAware? Call sign is rise air. I want. They must have a. They must have an ICAO identifier though. So I. I would think. Have a look. This must be the forest up here. Uh, I would think maybe even have a look on FlightAware and see if you can see any uh, any of the airports they go to. Uh, see if you can spot there, call sign on flight away. That might be my suggestion to try and find it. Just to see what their filed uh, call sign is. Yeah, there's tons and tons of little companies out there when you start start doing it. I actually I actually paid homage to one of my former one of my former employers today. Uh, I was flying around with the boomerang call sign, which was it's a call sign I use every once in a while just for fun. Uh, okay, so we're pretty much there already here for shoreline. Uh, continue north over the trees. After a short distance, you should see your next runway, O'Higgins Airport. I think it's this here, maybe? I can't even tell sometimes in here. I can't even tell where it is, but it's somewhere up here, so maybe it's this. Continue north over the trees. Anyways, yeah. Go north over the trees. We will find a runway here somewhere. Gotta be if they're if they're using a call if they're if they're if they're filing a flight plan and, and using a uh, an airline type call sign they have to have a, a three letter code of some kind. Oh, there it is! I see it right there. Boom. Okay, let's get the car beam on. That was too hard to find, and that was a pretty short little leg. Three more pretty short legs again. Oh, Higgins Airport. Well. Higgins Airport. Trim, 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 trim. Pull the power off on this thing, and boy, does it need some trim. Okay, now I may have trimmed it too far. It's okay when I get all 
get the flaps, I'll probably need to trim it even more. It's funny how they keep capping us off, though, for this, this bush trip by putting the cloud deck up there. Alright. There's one notch of flaps. Second notch of flaps. This doesn't look like a particularly long runway here. I don't have any statistics on it. I'm purely just eyeballing it here, but 3,000 feet, I mean, it's more than long enough for this thing, but it's not a lot of extra. Patagonia a little bit, and uh, sheep herding is apparently still one of the, it, it traditionally was one of the big, uh, I hate to say industries, but uh, certainly sources of income. The agriculture is shepherding, it's not uh, It's not necessarily growing, growing crops. That and oil and gas are what are kind of supporting the cities and towns around here. Flaps now. Get a little choppy again here. Line ever, but that's okay. Tap those brakes a little bit. Just a little bit. Go back to the start of the runway here and then reset there. keep going like a north another 5,000 8,000 miles we might actually hit North America <laughs> there's so much of this world that I have not explored in MSFS and I really should take more time to do it but I love the airplane flying as much it, 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 for me it's as much about the operating the airplanes as it is about the flying but I like to try and keep my operations to the realistic to the areas I know that's but I really should take more advantage of this sim and just play a little bit more have a little bit more fun with it there is a little turnaround bay here on the left side, so let's just go and take advantage of it here. Someone even painted a runway number on here. Not the best lineup ever, but that'll do. Alright, here we are. Alright, leg number... Uh, what was that? Leg number 11 is completed. All right, and we will definitely... Are we going to continue? Oh, yes, we're going to. I just find my chair for some reason. I can't seem to get comfortable today, and I don't know why. I don't know why today. I, I, I just feel like I can't be comfortable. All right. Uh, we don't need UGSX. You can go away. All right, so plane has been refueled. Looks like we got pretty close to full fuel on both sides. Get it back to flaps one. Let's uh, reset the trim a little bit more nose down, or it's just going to leap off the runway. Doo, 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 doo. I just love having a trim wheel on the honeycomb. It's so nice. All right. Uh, other than that, I think we're good to go. Ready? All right. Let's do leg number two here. Way. Uh, 
I am not good at flying this thing here. I am used to things that are much heavier. Much more inertia to keep it going in a straight line. <laughs> There's a little town here, though. O'Higgins. Cute little town of O'Higgins. Little town, anyways, next to the uh, next to the airport there. All right. Flaps up, put the nose down a little bit here, and let's get some climb power going. Trying to set the power and trim all at the same time here. Alright, we're going to level off at 2000, and uh, did I even start the timer? I did. I didn't even read it, but I started the timer. Head northeast from the airport. You should soon cross paths with the river running in the same direction, River, Ma river Mayo. Follow it. Alright, well, maybe this is it here. Follow this river, it should soon meander. Okay, stop climbing. Meanders way past a merging river, continue north. Alright, so it said take off northeast, which would be this direction. River Mayo merge. So this is probably River Mayo here. And then we'll just continue to follow the river. While we look for a merge with another river. And it's actually quite a ways, 11.75 miles, 5 minutes and 35 seconds. So it's actually going to be a while to get there. Okay. We're going to target 2,000 feet for this one again here. If I get it trimmed out, it'll be pretty good. As we accelerate, it keeps on wanting to lift into the sky. Just got to keep on trimming it nose down until she kind of out here. Alright, so I'm going to assume that this is River Mayor here. we got to go 11.75 miles, 5 minutes 35 seconds till we get a merge. Which soon meanders way past a merging river, continue north. Alright. There is, so looks like a little bit of, I don't know if that is just a stream or if it's a little roadway in there, but there's a little something in there anyways. That's a stream, or that's a road. It looks almost to be more like a road. But we're not following the road, we're following the river. satellite data here. It gave up, so it just went straight across the landscape there. Alright, don't want to lose track of it here, like... Alright, so it stays in this valley here, by the looks of it, it goes pretty straight now. I think I might just do one thing here, which is I might just very slightly adjust my track IR, so that it kind of... really does meander, doesn't it? we've been now. Now we've been 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Alright, but it does still meander this way, so I'm going to follow it here. Without hitting any of these ridges. We might need to gain some more altitude here, in all honesty. <laughs> okay, and then it kind of does this over here. Oh my god. I'm trying to keep an eye on this thing from this low altitude is not working for me here. Alright, we're back to full power again. Hold it up here. Alright. The river is going right underneath us here. Alright. It is a very meandering river, it is true. I haven't seen it really merge with anybody else though along the way here. Whoa. Turn your head away for a second and all of a sudden you're in an ascent. Alright. 
we're almost at that five minute mark now. 535. I'm gonna try and get to 2500 here because these hills are. We're not in a lot of elevation over these hills here. Okay, so I see a river that's kind of coming off here, so I wonder if this is coming through here, coming through this valley. As we come through here, there's that's the river merge right there. That's the river merge right there. And continue to follow the river north. Alright, we got her, we got her. Just really kind of pulling her up to make sure we don't lose it here. <laughs> don't end up in the side of a hill. Alright, uh, the river will continue north and eventually fork. At the foot of a tree-covered mountain, follow the eastern branch of the river at the fork. So two minutes and three seconds, so not very far here. Two minutes and three seconds, this thing's going to want to turn here. Alright, so we're trying to maintain 2,500 shot. I didn't adjust the trim, I just pulled it up into a gentle climb, so it should re-trim itself here nicely, hopefully. And maintain altitude because I pretty well had it trimmed before. Alright, so following the river, and after about two minutes at the foot of a tree-covered mountain, it forks. I think I see the fork up ahead there. Take the east fork. Pretty nice tree-covered mountain here. Follow the river northeast through the hills and out onto a plain. At the end of the plain, at the foot of the mountain, ahead you should see a road bridge. Okay, so this is another 2 minutes and 23 seconds. I feel like I need to gain even more altitude here. I might try to get to 3,000 really quickly here, just to trade altitude for airspeed briefly. It also gives me a chance to have a good look here. I don't see... there's not a fork here, actually. I thought there was a fork right here, but no, it just kind of turns. But Maybe it's just up the head here. All right, we're gonna go for 3,000 now. Now, it hasn't even been two minutes and three seconds yet, and I keep pulling the speed back because I keep on pulling us up into a climb here because we're getting close to these mountains here. Okay, so I think this is gonna be the fork here. It looks like we got two forks here. We've got one going west, one going so it says take the east fork. So again, follow the eastern branch of the river. Follow the river northeast through the hills and out onto a plain at the end of the plain. And foot of the mountain ahead, you should see a road bridge at the river. That's only two minutes, 23 seconds. So. Alright, so this does look like we are potentially coming to a fork in the river here. Yeah, I see this. So it's got one that meanders off to the west here again. And we are to follow the one that goes off to the east. Alright, so we're pretty much passing it now, so let's go ahead and reset that now, and yeah. All the river northeast, through the hills, and out onto a plane. 2 minutes and 23 seconds, so not even all that long, but now we're kind of targeting about 3,000 feet here, just to make sure we have enough room over these mountains. There is a road here already. I think it was that same road we saw before, has kind of cut its way through the mountains here. From O'Higgins out into the plains. You can see it just kind of, it looks like it's just going to parallel the river up here as we go. Nice, nice, nice. Topography creeps up on you. Yeah, that, that, that is a very real risk in aviation. If you're if you're flying in hill country like this, you can get into a valley where the, the valley rises faster than the airplane is able to climb, but it's also sometimes very hard to see that. Uh, just because for perspective, if it's just sort of gently up in front of you, it doesn't look like it's rising very quickly when in fact it is. So that is absolutely something you have to be always kind of cognizant, especially when you're flying in these mountain valleys like this. Some of them can rise pretty quickly. You have to be very attentive to that. But absolutely gorgeous scenery again today. Not the glaciers, but just following these meandering rivers and roads here. What fun. What absolute fun here. I'm trying not to hit the mountain. All right. That's about halfway, so at the end of this valley here, uh, foot of the mountain ahead, you should see a road bridge, the river. Follow the road. And then we're at Aromado, Aerodromo Entrada Meyer. Aerodromo Entrada Meyer. The road will wind its way through the forest, put brush and back across the river, eventually being the runway land at. Okay, so we're watching for the road bridge here. Without hitting any any mountain tops, so there's the road down there. It's 
following the river, but eventually it's going to cross it. The key is to be kind of like close enough to see it, but not so close that you're right over it and you can't see it. And that is the real kind of, I think that's almost the biggest challenge of this one because the river's down in these steep valleys. You can't get too far from the valley because you won't be able to see over the ridge into the valley, but you also can't be too close to the valley. Aha! Aha! Right there at the foot of the mountain. There's the road bridge. Boom. Follow the road. Follow the road. It's going to wind through the forest. Find through the forest, brush it back across the river, eventually leading to a runway you can land at. All right, so following the road. Gonna lead us back to the river and back to the runway. And I see, I think I might even see the runway there. I see a little straight shot through the trees there. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but there's a little kind of flat spot through the trees there. That could be a road, but that could also be a runway. Creep up on it. I didn't even reset this at the bridge here. Oh, I did. Did I? Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm smarter than I think I am. <laughs> I'm more attentive than I think I am sometimes. I didn't mean to do this for this bike, I just wanted to get a nice external shot, but follow that road. It does cross the river up there, and there is the runway anyways. It's pretty obvious from here now, so let's go ahead and get the car heat on. We're going to need to give ourselves some room to lose some altitude here. If we pull it right to idle, we're going to give ourselves some room to lose altitude here. I think what we'll do is we'll go in this way, and we'll just do a 180 at the end of the runway and come back out this way. enough room to lose some altitude here. I get the flaps out. I think that'll probably actually be my best bet. I'm super high right now. I'm going to overshoot the center light a little bit just to give myself some space because it also does not look like a log runway here either. I would say that's probably at most 3,000 feet. All right, let's just go full flaps now. We're, we're at the flaps speed down a lot now with idle thrust. Even this. And if we do just a couple of S turns, just sort of help lose some altitude here. We don't have a whole lot of extra runway to burn here. We're just trying to lose a little bit of extra altitude by making the just a little bit longer with the S turns here. There, now I think we're okay. I think we're settling at a good enough rate. I might almost have to add a little bit of power just to make sure we make it over the trees there. No, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Oh yeah, you're right, crosswind. Good, good eye. Good eye. I was mostly worried about hitting the trees on final here. Sometimes I just, sometimes I hate my yoke. It just, it, 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 it gets stuck. I think it might need some lubrication even. Because it does, sometimes, every once in a while it binds up a little bit and then it'll shift and all of a sudden my subtle small input becomes a big jarring input. Just at the wrong moments usually too. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to roll straight to the end of the runway, do a 180 there because I think we're going to take off that direction. I honestly don't know. But uh, there is, I guess, a bit of a valley here. It didn't look like there was a very good valley to take off towards in this direction, but maybe there is, so. Anyways, we'll swing around at this end and we'll figure it out. All right, that's good enough, stop there. All right, that is leg 12. 
There we go. That wasn't terrible landing. It was better than the first one, but it, even with the crosswind. And I almost find sometimes the crosswind helps, because then it really gives you something to aim for. All right. Uh, okay, so aircraft has been refueled again. Beauty. Let's go ahead and get the flaps back to just one notch of flaps. Uh, it's actually not a bad trim position, because it was just kind of falling out of the sky at idle thrust. Let's make sure I get the carb heat in this time before we take off. All right, and let's have a quick little read, read see here. So fly northwest from the airport. So no, we're facing the wrong way. We, we were gonna take off that way. So we'll, we'll take off, we'll flip 180 and we'll pass the airport again. Uh, fly northwest from the airport just quickly spot a river running in the same direction that leads to the southeastern shore of a lake. Follow the lake northeast. This is the long leg. This is 27 minutes and 46 seconds the whole way. So, all right. Yeah, that's weird. Westwind Aviation and Transwest Airlines, but no ICAO code. They, they, they must have one. Oh, well. Anyways, all right. I'm just going to get this going here. All right. So, just sort of aim for this little cleft in the mountains there. So, I'm trying to pick something to aim for. Whoa. Easy there. As that tail wheel came off, she just wanted to just go so far left. The rudder was not affected, but the tail wheel was off the ground, and that was not a good crossman takeoff. Again, too much time as a jet jockey. And it's always just maintain maintain the airplane straight ahead until rotation, and then you put it in the input, if any at all. Maybe a little time in the input, but Airbus especially, if they don't put in any takeoff crosswind inputs. Just because the thing, the trouble with, with a jet is that when you put in a crosswind input in the jet, you try to keep the, keep the into wing into wind wing low, what you often end up doing is inadvertently triggering the spoilers as well. There, let's get climb power going here. You'll often end up triggering the, the spoilers as well, and that's the that's the uh, uh, that's the problem is that you'll you end up with you'll end up not creating drag on the takeoff roll. So that's the that's the problem that a lot of airlines have with the idea of, uh, or a lot of manufacturers have with the idea of crosswind inputs in a jet is that you'll, you're likely to trigger the roll spoilers when you put in a crosswind input and actually extend your takeoff roll because of that. All right, see so if we can get to three thousand pretty much be in the field down more or less, so we'll go ahead and start that timer now, so Spotted River running in the same direction that leads to the southeastern shore of a lake, follow the lake northwest and will lead to a small bottleneck water channel between some rocky hills that leads to the northern shore of the lake. Okay, so first of all, let's get this thing leveled off at 3,000, taking off northwesterly, we should follow a river, and I think I see a river, or a body of water through there, so... All right, so I do see a little river here. Southeast, at least the southeast shore of a lake. All the lake northwest will lead to a small bottleneck water channel between some rocky hills that lead to the northern shore of the lake. So I think I see that there. Uh, four minutes and 11 seconds though, no. So it's, it's, this can't be the bottleneck here. The bottleneck must be up there. Targeting 3,000 for this light because I feel like we're already stuck at a uh, pretty low elevation here in the mountains. this bottleneck up here that are just right up at 12 o'clock there. Sorry to blue chat with boring account. <laughs> I don't know how safe I'm being. I'm trying not to hit the mountains as best I can. It's my, it's my main goal today is to try to not hit the mountains. So key to that will probably be not descending unexpectedly but maintaining a trimmed 
condition at 3,000 feet. All right. Uh, follow the lake northwest will lead to a small bottleneck water channel between some rocky hills that lead to the northern shore of the lake. So it could be this right here. I feel like this is it right here. Might be a little bit early, but... And we're getting some of this bouncy wind off these hills again, though. But uh, if, if ever you were to describe a bottleneck, I'd say this is this is it right here. So it's a little bit early, I think. But head north across the rocks to the next lake. Follow its eastern shore north. Follow its eastern shore north. It should eventually pass a river slip. Along the lake, it bends towards the northwest and onto the northern shore. So, go across the rocks. May not be able to do that at this altitude. <laughs> Definitely not going to make it across that one there. But uh, I can see the next lake off there in the distance. So, are we over this rocky channel yet? I think we are, kind of. Anyways, I'll just wait till about here. assume that this was it here. There's about 30 seconds to go. I wonder if that takeoff leg was factored in there, but head north across the rocks to the next lake. Unless there, unless... No. Alright. Follow its eastern shore north. So what I think we'll do is we'll just cut across here, just to the right of this hill right here. eventually pass a river slip, continue along the lake as it bends towards the northwest and on to the northern shore. All right. Let's go across the rocks to the next lake. Five hundred. Thank you. Kind of figured that, Ooh, and we're going down, which does not help my situation here. Was it this one, or is there another lake here? Hold on. There's two lakes here. There's one on either side of this. <laughs> I don't think it was this lake because I don't think it's going to give me enough time here. Three minutes and twenty-nine seconds. Feel more like so we're gonna hop over here because I feel like this lake was the lake because it bends to the northwest. This lake does not really take much of a bend to the northwest. All right, so obviously made an error there, but that's okay. We recovered it, so we're gonna go past a river and then it bends to the northwest. I think that's the river slip there. Okay. No, it's fine. I don't mind having other things to chat about because this is really interesting. But like at, the, at at times, it is a little bit. I hate to say boring, but yeah, there, there, there's times in between where you're kind of looking for stuff and you're waiting for stuff to happen. But there is there are moments where there's not a whole lot of kind of activity. You're just sort of looking out the window, waiting for something. Okay, so I, I feel like it's not going to be 3 minutes 29 seconds. I must have stopped and started the timer too early or something. 3 minutes and 29 seconds to get to that. Then bend towards the northwest and onto the northern shore. Head north from the shoreline and make your way over the trees. Towards the thick brush of the hills. You should soon see a river running north. Follow the river as it passes by an island. I hope I'm not making a wrong turn. I hope that was not the, the case here. See, it's the northern shore, it does kind of, yeah. So, head north of the shoreline and make your way over the trees towards the thick brush of the hills. You should soon see a river running north. Follow the river as it passes by an island at its center. You'll eventually come to a fork. The 
One branch leading off to a lake in the rocky snow-capped mountains. They ignore this and get to the north. See, and, yeah, like, I feel like... I don't know what speed their planet is at right now, but... I've got this thing basically the throttle is wide open. And I am not... The times are seeming way out of whack on this. Something's not right. But it does seem to reach kind of a foresty end here. Continue north. Should see a river heading north. That first leg seemed too short, though, so I must have stopped that at the wrong point. Because then we're going to be about 30 seconds late getting to this northern shoreline. Yeah, okay, so obviously I kind of... I used the wrong landmark, but I think it's kind of adding up. I hope. <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, I think we have to go right up this valley here, so we're... Right across the trees, and then we're going to go up the valley. So, the northern shore is the next checkpoint. Lago Alegre, northern shore. I hope this is Lago Alegre, and I hope Lago Alegre wasn't that short one back there, but no, it didn't seem right. Alright. You'll eventually come... Follow the river. You should see, see a river running north. Yeah, so I see the river running north, I think. So it kind of cuts down here, but this river goes right up the valley there. Okay, so we're crossing the northern shore pretty much right now. We're going to do a reset here and hope that this is correct. <laughs> uh, the key word is hope. All right. Follow the river as it passes by an island at its center. So we have 3 minutes and 34 seconds here. Eventually come to a fork with one branch leading off to a lake in the rocky snow-capped mountains. Ignore this branch. Do not follow the branch. Alright, so looking for an island just to know that we're going the right way here, but uh, it is more or less kind of northy. And if we messed it up, well, we'll come back and try it again. Not afraid to admit when I've made a mistake and go back and try it again. The biggest thing really, I'm looking for an island, but more than anything, we're looking for a fork. I just want to fly to the point where I can see the river as we go by it here. I don't see any islands yet. But that's only been one minute. And that could be that there is a lake there. I don't know if that's the lake, but that could be the lake. One branch leading off to the lake in the rocky snow-capped mountains. Eh, yeah, I mean, there's snow-capped there. There is a lake there. I haven't seen it. Oh, oh, wait. There is an island. There is an island. Okay, I think we're going the right way. I think we got it now. There is a little bit of an island. Great. I'm going to cross just because I don't want to get close to this ridge. So we're just going to cross to the other side of the river here so we can see out the window what we're doing. I'm going to assume that this is probably the fork they're talking about here. If there is a fork here, is there a fork here? Maybe there's no fork here. Maybe there is no fork. It's okay. There could be another fork up ahead somewhere. I feel like we're going to gain some more altitude here. Start gaining altitude. Oh, shoot. That's the next thing it says. Start gaining altitude. Okay. Well, start gaining altitude. Can target 4,000 for a while here. Try not to hit the cloud deck. <laughs> Trying to get do it all the right way here. Alright, oh, there's another lake up in the snow-covered mountains, so that's probably the way they don't want us to go. Ignore that, that branch. Or maybe even up there. I feel like they want us to go this way. It hasn't even been long enough yet. Here, but somewhere along here, there's supposed to be a fork. The river. Five hundred. Three minutes and thirty-four seconds. Okay, so it wasn't quite yet, but maybe somewhere around one of these next bends here. I'm trying to get to thirty-four hundred, and I keep going down every time. I almost think I've gotten up there again. I haven't trimmed it to climb, so as soon as I release the back pressure, it wants to go back to where it was.
Okay, maybe there's a fork in the river coming up here. Just gonna keep meandering back and forth across the valley trying to uh, see the river. Too aggressively here, but I still don't see a fork in this river here. I still hope we're going the right way. Because <laughs> now we're just sort of tickling the bottom of the, the cloud deck here. I don't want to go much higher than 3,500 feet or we'll be stuck in the clouds and we won't be able to see what we're doing. And that's not good for VFR. That's not good at all for VFR. Okay, okay, I think I see a river, maybe. It's been way too long now, but I've been also kind of very meandering this time here. Alright. Start getting altitude to the river twist and bends way through to a small lake at the base of two mountains. Okay, here's the, here's the river, here's the lake. Yeah, weather's closing in a bit, yeah. Alright, eh, the, the weather kind of opened up right here, good. Okay, so here is definitely the fork, ignore it. Ignore that lake altogether. Don't even look at it. Don't even think about it, but okay. Restart the timer. Start getting altitude. 1 minute 53 seconds. Bends its twist its way to a small lake at the base of two mountains. So I feel like here maybe, or here. Head north from the lake. You should see... Head north from the lake through the gap between the two mountains. So it might even be here, so let's cross over so I can see what we're doing again. You should see a valley leading up towards another mountain. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Don't get too far ahead. I kind of like to see kind of what's going on up ahead, but also at the same time not. Alright. So the river definitely goes up this way. And meanders to a lake at the base of two mountains. So I think it goes up between these two mountains. I think that's what it is right That's it right there, I think is what we're looking for. Forty-five hundred, and I kind of want to stay at forty-five hundred just because of just because of the terrain here. It told me to gain altitude, so I don't want to don't want to lose too much altitude here. Don't want to let it pitch down. Want to stay here. All right. Head north from the lake through the gap between the two mountains. It's not much of a lake if that's it. North of the lake, you should see a gap between two mountains. You should see a valley leading up towards another mountain. Follow it and turn northeast at the mountain. You should eventually find a pool of water in some rocky flats. Okay, so I'm kind of going with this is not the lake. Small lake. I, I feel like this is the lake here. They want me to find. And it is taking longer, but it's supposed to be minute 53. It's taking longer, but I'm also not taking the direct route. I'm doing a lot of kind of winding and meandering, but also much flying at a much slower airspeed because I keep gaining altitude, so the, the math doesn't add up either. Back to seeing these glaciers again, too. Okay, at least we got away from the kind of lower cloud deck over there. We got a little bit higher ceiling up here now. Thank goodness. Alright, yeah, it's a, I'd, I'd call that a small lake. Head north of the lake through the gap between the mountains. You see a valley leading up towards another mountain. Follow it and turn northeast at the mountain. You should eventually find a pool of water in some rocky flats. Pool of water, huh? <laughs> okay, we're looking for pool of water. It's only a minute 18 seconds, so it could even be this. So go north from this lake, or over the lake, not quite yet, but almost. Go north over the lake. Valley leads to another mountain, turn northeast. So, like it is pointing us right at this mountain here. We are passing the lake right about now. I'm gonna say right now. Yeah. Should eventually find a pool of water on some rocky flats. So, yeah, just kind of keep following this valley. Boy, this one's a bit of a, a bit of a minefield here. Just trying to make sure we. And now we're coming back onto a cloud deck here. So. Hopefully we can stay VFR with this cloud deck here. Head north of the pool of water to see a river you can follow. It should soon lead you to a fork with a branch running west around a mountain. Continue north. Alright, so... Is this 
this pool of water here. Try it not to bash my airplane into the mountains. There's a little pool of water there. There's a little pool of water here. Yeah, there's a little pool of water. There's another pool of water right here. So I think one of these anyways is where we're supposed to be. 5,000 feet now. We're above the clouds here. I might even go 55 just to make sure I stay above these mountains, but okay, so it's probably this here. Let's go north, and we're going to find another river. Should lead you to it. So, 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Alright, so we're over the pool of water. Yeah, right about now. Alright, so we're going to target 55 to try and stay above the clouds now, and hopefully we can still see the river through these clouds. Head north of the pool of water pretty much north here. You'll quickly see a river you can follow. It should lead you to a fork with a branch running west around a mountain continue north. Alright. So I do see a little river forming down there underneath the clouds. 2 minutes and 14 seconds to Rio del Salto Fork. Even if I miss west around the mountain, continue north, so basically just continue north, don't hit the mountains, don't fly through the clouds since you can't even see the mountains. There is, looks like a little stream kind of meandering through this valley, yeah, there you go, as we kind of come across this cloud deck, I can see it down there now. Alright, 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 we're doing okay, we're doing okay. Alright, and then it's going to have a fork that goes west, but where, so I think it's going to be in that valley there by the looks of it. I think I can probably almost start to duck down a little bit now here, too. Trouble is you can't fly directly over something in an airplane or you won't be able to see. I've always got to fly to one side so you can see what you're looking at here. But Alright, there's a river, and I think that's a fork down there, so let's just start going back down, and we're going to try and duck under this next cloud deck here. So just keep following it. Continue north. Now it's going to be a long 6 minutes and 11 seconds. Alright. How long has this been so far? Whoa. We're going faster than I can realize there. Alright. Um, 2 minutes and 14 seconds. So yeah, we're pretty much there. And uh, yeah, looks like this river forks here. So one goes west around the mountain. We're going to continue to follow the one that goes north. I kind of want to drop down below about 4,500 to kind of get underneath this next layer of clouds here. The real question is, does the river go straight down this valley? And it does appear it goes straight down this valley. So we're going to just follow it down this valley. Did I reset the timer there? I did not. No, oh, we're, we're being the fork right now, actually. So that's perfect. Reset start. Six minutes and 11 seconds. Follow the river through the canyons and valleys. After a while, you should see a long, narrow lake near the eastern bank of the river. Just beyond this is a fork where you should head east. And that's going to almost take us right to the airstrip. So we're already almost to the next airstrip. Six minutes and 11 seconds. we got to head north for. And we're kidding about canyons and valleys. So I'm going to try and duck underneath this cloud deck. That's the only thing that's really kind of forcing me to stay low. And I think they did that intentionally. I feel like they did that intentionally. Because a lot of the other push trips, it's like clear skies. Or like few at 25,000. And this push trip seems to be very consistently like... A low cloud deck hanging at about 4,000 feet, and they must have done that intentionally to just force you into the valleys, force you to follow the valleys. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go duck underneath this. We're going to see if we can't duck back down to about 3,000 here. It's going to put us way underneath the level of the rocks and everything, the big rocks here, but it's a lot easier to not hit the rocks if you're not in the clouds. here, below the cloud deck now. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> it's 
quite a lot of work to do this VFR flying to really kind of get into a mode too, I find. Really sort of just end up very focused here. Alright, so it does look like this valley does open up a little bit around this next corner here, which is good. I'm trying to slip down to about 3,500, I think should do it for now. Alright, so again, it's been almost two minutes. After a while, you should see a long, narrow lake near the eastern bank of the river, just beyond the fork, where you should head east. Alright, there's the 3,500 I wanted. Maybe I'll even do 3,000, because it looks like this valley does kind of open up a little bit, which should make it a little bit easier to maintain altitude. like flying around these giant mountains to make you feel really insignificant in your x though. So that could be the long narrow lake to the east side. That could very much be it. I don't see a fork where I can head east, so maybe there's another one. Because we've only been two minutes. It's gotta be it's gotta be another one up ahead here. Get the airplane tripped out to maintain 3,000 feet. There's a road along this river here, too. Notice when the road restarted. Alright, that was 3,000. Let's see if we can actually trim this thing to fly level. And as we come along here, that's that could be the narrow lake there. That's probably it. That would make a little bit more sense. Turn east and find an airstrip. There is a road that travels up the side of this valley here, though, and follows that river. The river does look like it's pretty prone to flooding, but I guess in this mountainous area, if you get a heavy rainfall, it doesn't permeate very far into the mountains, it just runs down them. This mountain's just solid rock. Okay, that's got to be the lake. That's got to be the lake. See a long narrow lake near the east bank of the river just beyond the Fork where you should head east. And then it's another five minutes. Just start crossing over to the other side so I can see the river that heads east. Alright. We are coming down to the end of leg 13, and then it's just one more really short leg. Leg 14 is not a long one either. I think it's like 12 minutes or something. And then we'll be done this Patagonia bush trip. And it does, it, we've done it in short spurts, but in reality, I'll have put probably 10 hours into this trip. Maybe more. Our streams were each about three hours. I, I have a bit of a chatter sometimes. I, sometimes I just like to get on my soapbox and talk a little bit. All right. Anyways, uh, so there's the road. There's the lake. Just beyond it, the river forks to the east, so probably that's the river there. Let's just go up and have a little look-see, but I think that's what we're doing. So we're turning east here, going east for about five minutes, and then we'll get to that next lake, or that next airport. It would appear to be what we're doing. I hope, if I've got this right. <laughs> There's a big possibility that I could have it completely wrong. <laughs> that's always possible. But it seems to be bearing it out. A long, narrow lake the east bank of the river. What's funny, though, is if you look at the river, the satellite image does not match up with the water data. That's funny. Water data is probably provided by, like, a, some kind of geographical data rather than actually etched off the satellite and rather than, than uh, absorbed or, or, or generated off the satellite image. And that's why it's kind of straight, whereas the river itself is actually, of course, the satellite is very curvy. 
Okay, so just beyond this, and now the dogs want to go ahead. Alright, five minutes, dogs. I will let you go in five minutes. Oh, for crying out loud, they're going to start barking. Wake everybody else up in this house. Alright, so that is definitely it. Turn eastbound here for 4 minutes 56 seconds. After a short distance, you'll see another river merge with this one as it bends towards the northeast through a grassy plain. The river will eventually fork just south of a lake. Just beyond the fork at the foot of the mountain is a runway you can land at. Well, oh, doesn't look like much of a runway. We're back to this grass strip thing again here. Lago Brown Airstrip. Just a strip of grass. Alright, but it looks like the road goes this way as well. It's funny that this lake is just doesn't connect to either river, either the river at either end, it's just a sort of a little kettle lake. Alright. So we gotta follow this for about five minutes. We should end up seeing a lake, so that's yeah, that's going to be the big thing to me, is when I can see the lake, I'll know we're kind of in the right spot. We will eventually fork just south of a lake, just beyond the fork at the foot of a mountain, is a runway you can land at. Alright. Then I will just take a quick two minute break while we're hitting when we hit the ground, let the dogs have one more pee break before for the night, and then we'll come back and finish the last leg, finish Fort like 14 of the Patagonia Bush Trail. I can't believe we've done this because, like, when I looked at it, like, it looked, it, 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 it didn't look intimidating, but it just looked lengthy. But if you break it up into smaller chunks, the nice thing is you can break it up into these smaller chunks and then you can, you can fly it in manageable chunks and it just remembers where you are, of course. So you don't have to fly it all at once. But you get to see, you get the benefit of doing the bush trip without putting in 8 to 10 or 12 hours all at once. Uh, I kind of want to do another one at some point. The one, I started this one with my friends. We did, uh, yeah, it, it's the, uh, California Nevada one, which starts out like Bakersfield, it goes like all up and down like the California Nevada border, uh, you know, through the desert and, and uh, out to Reno and north from Reno and circles back around again. And it's just it's absolutely gorgeous, but you're doing it in a cup and it's something like 800 miles, so it, it's like a 15 16 hour bush trip, like it's a ridiculous amount of time, but at the same time, like these things are so much fun, like you don't mind doing them. You can't do them all in one go, but it's just sort of, you just keep on doing them, you keep on enjoying them, time and time again. And there's so many to do now. And that every world update has released like three more, so there's got to be like 40 or 50 push trips if you have all the, the world updates downloaded. I don't even have them all downloaded. I, I kind of got away from downloading them just because they take up so much space, and some of the ones, I, I, I haven't really used the scenery very much, you know, like I don't, uh, I don't fly in Japan, I don't fly in very many places in Europe. I mean, if you fly a lot in Europe, there's so many world updates, you know, you gotta have like six or eight world updates downloaded to fly all through Europe. And I might do that, but my hard drives are starting to run out of space again. I might need, uh, like, I think I have a, a terabyte SSD drive dedicated to MSFS, and it's already almost full. There's a few other, uh, there's a few other Steam games on there as well, but two-thirds of that SSD is dedicated to MSFS, and I'm running out of space. I have to be picky about what I actually put on my drive. I might need to actually get a bigger SSD, which I, I don't have any extra drive space left. I guess I can replace the existing SSD. All right, uh, looks like there's a river maybe meandering through this valley. Okay. I feel like we just keep going this direction. I think this is the river merge here. Yeah, there's a river that comes up, comes down this valley here by the looks of it. Or is that the road? No, I think that's the road that goes up there. No, this is a, this is the river here. So I feel like yeah, here we go. Kind of coming around the bend here. What do we do? What have we been now? We've been four minutes. Yeah, I think we're coming to it here. So south of a lake, the river's gonna merge. The river's gonna fork. just beyond the fork, at the foot of the mountain, is a river you can land at. So I feel like it's there, maybe? So here's the fork up here, south of a lake. I feel
feel like the airstrip should be right about here, maybe. We'll just sort of meander up this way and see if we can see it here. It's just beyond. It's just beyond, right? Just beyond the fork at the foot of the at the foot of a mountain is a runway you can land at. Yeah, I think I'm starting to see it in there. I think I see it. it's just a green strip, so it's not much to look at. Let's start just losing a little bit of altitude here. Curve heat on. Uh, thankfully, add-on linker is a lifesaver for add-on space management. I'm not sure how I meant about it now. Yeah, uh, and me too. And I, I kind of, I, I, yeah. I mean, uh, my trouble is like I don't think my computer has another free SATA connection. Even if I bought like another SATA SSD drive, I don't think I have another free connection. I would have to remove one of my existing drives, copy everything over from it, and I don't have enough space on any of my free on any of my drives to do that. Sometimes, so like I don't even know. All right, yeah, that's got to be it right there. I'll figure out something. But uh, I think I'm going to need to expand my hard drive space again if I'm going to install much more stuff on my sim again. Alright, let's get the speed way back here. Because we are approaching way too fast. To this airplane is to really you have to get to the flap speed, and then once you get the flaps out, you, it just creates an immense amount of drag and you go full flaps right away. Trim, 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 trim. <laughs> just doing nothing but trimming here. You guys can't see my hand moving, but it's just frantically trimming my honeycomb trim wheel. I just love having a trim wheel. I really do. It's just fantastic. threshold of the runway, and then we're just going to take a two minute break while I go and let my dogs out. <laughs> that was not the worst landing I've ever done. A little bouncy still. And again, it comes down to me also just like having like no sense of like how to land an airplane when your butt is 20 inches off the ground. I'm used to my butt being 11 feet off the ground when I land an airplane, not 20 inches, so I'm always constantly flaring way too high. Field as I can here, spin it around and take a, take that just that two minute break, and then we'll get this done here. And the next leg, I don't think it's a long one. I feel like this might be the end of the field here, where there we go. All right, light completed, thirty eight minutes. And we have one more leg to go. Yes, GSX, I know. Uh, 17 minutes and 57 seconds. So, all right. Let me just set the parking brake real quick here. Get back up to a nice 1,000 RPM idle. Get 800 RPM. And I will be back in just like two minutes. Just going to go and let those dogs go out one more time before they wake the whole house. <laughs> That's way too much RPM. All right. Be right back.
we go. Got to find my unmute button there. There we are. All right, guys. One last leg to go. That's it. 17 minutes, 57 seconds, supposedly. Uh, and that's going to take us to SCHR. And that is going to be the end of the Patagonia bush trip. So, uh, Lago Brown, Eastern Shore. Head off to the east and make your way around the mountainside to the eastern shore of the lake. All right. Let's just make sure everything is reset properly here. So let's go flaps one for takeoff. Let's just check the trim setting. Let's go a little bit more nose down trim. There we go. That's pretty much out right about the middle. Parking brake off will probably also help with the takeoff roll. Full mixture, full prop, ready to go. Here we go. Final takeoff of the Patagonia bush trip. Here we go. And I hope that background noise is not too loud. I don't get that I can talk over it. It might be a little bit loud. I might turn it down just a hair. Of course, now that the stream is like three quarters over, it might be too late to do that anyways. But, all right. Start the timer. Head off to the east. And make your way around the mountainside to the eastern shore of the lake. All right. East. Mountainside shore lake. Flaps up. Line power. All right, we're gonna start off at 2,500 for this leg and see how that see how that feels. There's 2,500. You still do much with FS economy these days? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yes and no. Sometimes I it kind of comes in waves. I kind of get excited for it every once in a while in waves. I don't have any big overriding goals, so I'm just sort of just saving money, keeping my airplanes paid for, but I'm not really, I, I don't have any big airplanes I don't want to buy anymore. I have a Citation. I have four airplanes in my fleet. I have a Longitude. I have a TBM. I have, uh, what do I have? I have a 172 and I think a Baron. Um, so I, 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 you know, for a while, like, I was very motivated because I was trying to save money for my Citation. And I finally got my Citation, so now I don't, I'm not, I'm not motivated. <laughs> Make your way around the mountainside to the eastern shore of the lake. So, kind of going east here. We're at the eastern shore, but it's this go three minutes, ten seconds. Head to the valley ahead. Okay, so we'll just keep on going around the eastern shoreline here anyways. Uh, but I do, every once in a while, I get kind of excited by it, and I, I, I fly again. And I certainly, towards the end of every month, I tend to do a couple of flights to make sure I have enough money to cover the, cover the payments for the airplanes for another month. I, I don't do it as extensively as I used to, though. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'll do it every once in a while. And actually, when, I was talking about this when I started the uh, stream, but uh, I did... Um, I did... Uh, uh, some flights this evening earlier, just before the stream, to help out for uh, an over-the-shoulder exam in uh, Toronto FIR, and uh, I decided to, you know, kind of double up. So I did an FS Economy flight. So I found an airplane uh, in Timmins that I wanted to use. So I, uh, it was a Citation Longitude, which I, I do enjoy flying. I like it. It's a, it's a good, it's an easy airplane to fly. I like it. Uh, I know how to use it very well. So I, I flew it from Timmins down to Sudbury and back, and I probably I didn't make all that much money, but I probably made about three or four thousand dollars just doing that. Um, you know, not my own airplane, but my own airplane is, is in South America now. <laughs> uh, no, it's not South America anymore. It wasn't South America now, it's up in San Lucia, San Lucia. So I've got, I've got to at some point kind of make its way from the Caribbean back into North America again. But I kind of wanted to go see the Caribbean because there is supposedly some very nice scenery up there. All right, so uh, make your way through the valley ahead, flying northeast. Uh, head around the contours of the rolling hills. You'll eventually find yourself on the shore of another lake, Lake Co Lego Cochrane. So Lago Brown, so follow this valley and then it'll lead us to Lago Cochrane. I'm almost a little bit disappointed. It's funny, and, and this has always been one of my mental things, is I almost hate to finish stuff. Because I'm always excited about always knowing there's more to go and I hate to finish stuff. Um, and, and I kind of, like, it, it, games are kind of one of the biggest things. Like, uh, if, if I think I'm drawing towards the end of a game, I tend to lose interest in it. Because I don't, I, I don't want to finish it. I always want there to be more to do. And so, like, um, it, this is true of a lot of different games. Planning another bush trip? I don't think I'm going to. Uh, maybe not, not, not right away. Not for a little while. I think I'll go back to doing the pilot's life first. Uh, this has been kind of fun, but it's been, uh, it, it, it's been a lot of, 
mental work to do it. Uh, not that the flying the pilot life isn't mental work, but it's a different it's a different kind of mental work that I'm not used to. And I've been enjoying it. It's been a nice change of pace, but I'm kind of almost looking forward to getting back in the bus and 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 uh, really trying to trying to do that which I know that which I know well, which is how to fly the bus uh, at an airline. So that's that's kind of my mentality of it right now. And I, I'm I'm always excited for the new seasons too. Uh, some new some new places we haven't been before and some other route combinations we haven't been so I haven't been to Punta Cana before uh, alright so make your way through the valley ahead 2 minutes 55 seconds so at the end of Lago Brown so we'll go to Lago Cochrane uh, so yeah so that's kind of my, my logic behind it but uh, if, if you have suggestions too for anything else like it's not even a bush trip but, but something different to do um, I, I was thinking about this and I might even take a, a couple of I might take a, a little, uh, what's the word, a little hiatus in the middle of the season and maybe go fly the DC-6 for a little while because I haven't flown the DC-6 for a while. I'd have to go practice it, to be honest, because it's been a while since I've flown that thing and it's it's a it's a beast. That thing is a beast. It, it doesn't it doesn't turn quickly. It doesn't maneuver quickly. It's a it's a big beast. you got to use it to kind of fly straight lines from A to B, much like any other airliner, so... Uh, but I but I did enjoy flying it. Like I was flying quite a bit when it first came out. I've kind of it's been stuck in my hangar. Pardon me, it's been stuck in my hangar for a while now. I have not uh, actually gotten it out, you know, played with it at all in probably the better part of a year, maybe more. So that might be something fun to do, just to get change it up a little bit. So I might do that either midway through the season, or maybe I'll finish the whole season, then I'll go do like a little tour with the, the DC six and go visit some airports. Alright, I feel like just over and around this next bridge here is going to be Lago Cochrane. Head northwest along the shoreline. Up ahead you should see an island in the lake. Make your way past it. Island. It's got a name. Its name is Island. <laughs> yeah, there it is. You can see Lago Cochrane coming into sight, so we're just going to continue to meander around the hills here at 2500, not 2600, not 2700, 2500 is what I want to be at. This is Lego Cochrane, so we're going to turn northwest. If I can find the trim settings, I retrim it for takeoff and even for the descent, and then it kind of really ruins my trim thereafter. Alright, so here we go across the rolling hills towards Lego Cochrane. When we reach the shoreline, Northwest along the shoreline, so a quick left turn along the shoreline when we get to it. It should take us a little while to get to another island. Lake here. <laughs> Didn't realize as you're coming through here, but boy, it is actually a pretty, pretty big lake. All right, so we're just going to make our way to the shoreline, and then we'll hike a nine-degree turn to the left and start looking for this island. Oh, stop gaining altitude. I thought I had trimmed out. I thought I had kind of figured it out, but nope. I did not. And there's an island right there. There's quite a few islands in this lake, but off to the left there's only really one, so I'm going to assume that that's the island we're heading for. Alright, so I just passed over the shoreline now. Head northwest along the shoreline. Up ahead you should see an island in the lake, make your way past it. Alright, so we're going to pass the island. Yeah, that's about right, 2 minutes 28 seconds, that should be about right. The lake bends to the west at the foot of some mountains. Follow the shoreline around and continue southwest. Up ahead, the rocky shores on either side of the river will narrow to form a channel. Make your way through it, and you should be able to see an, ar an archipelago in the distance. Make your way there. Okay, so we're going to go to the island 
gonna go to the island here where the lake bends. And then we're gonna follow this around to the southwest. And it is gonna narrow to a channel. I kinda see the channel there, then some other islands. and then we'll be there. So by the time we get there, and we get to the Cochrane Airport, we'll be there. That'll be the end of our bush trip, so... Not a long one on this one. Not a long one at all. That's okay. One thing I haven't done is I haven't actually tried different power settings. So sometimes in cruise we like to get it back to like 2300 RPM. I wonder if this will help us get even more speed or not. Just for an experiment now that uh, now that the bush trip is over, let's try 2300 RPM and see if it actually does get us a better speed or not. Because I, otherwise, like I feel like I'm flying around like full throttle trying to keep up with the, the people that planned this trip. Alright, so fly past the island. Follow the lake as it bends southwest. And through the channel down there, we should eventually find Cochrane Airport. So it does kind of narrow to a channel down there, that's fine. And then we'll mark the Lego on the other side. Alright, so, 236, that was about right, 228, good enough. Let's just make the turn. If anything, it's struggling to maintain altitude now that I've got the power back, or it just could be that I can't trim to save my life. Also, we are going around a corner. Alright, 5 minutes and 52 seconds. So another 10 minutes, basically, combined between this and the next section and we'll be at the next airport. And basically, that's what we're going to do. Up ahead, the rocky shores on either side of the river will narrow to form a channel. Yep. Make your way through it. You should be able to see an archipelago in the distance. Yep. I think I do. Make your way there. Don't see too much in the way of, like, roads or anything on either side of this hope. RPM again here and see if this does a little better. I feel like I'm getting more power out of it at 2500 RPM. It's very rugged. The whole trip has been very rugged. Like, out of the probably this has been about 11 hours I've been flying this trip, I've probably flown along a road for maybe 30 minutes of it, maybe an hour. There have been a few stretches where we have been kind of flying along roads. I remember that uh, at the, uh, on the last leg of episode two. It's the first leg of episode two. <laughs> Where we're flying along until we reach this sheep farm at the end of the road, this ranch at the end of the road. But uh, yeah, for the most part, it's a beautifully rugged country. Not a Tim Hortons to be seen. No, nope. the nearest Tim Hortons is probably at least five, if not uh, 8,000 miles away, unfortunately. So I've got to make my own coffee down here. Now I could probably bring my own Tim Hortons coffee. I'd probably be okay with that. <laughs> I love it. Not a Tim Hortons to be seen. That's how you know it's really rugged. Also, there's no roads, no buildings, no power lines, no cell towers. There's probably, I'd be curious to know what the cell phone reception is like down here, but probably most of the way there's been absolutely zero cell phone reception. We've fl overflown a couple of cities too. We've overflown like four, f we've overflown like at least three cities of a decent size. Four, now that I'm trying to think about it. Four cities of a decent size. So, uh, we have, um, uh, there, there would have been cell phone reception periodically. Patagonia National Dish is spit, spit roast lamb. Well, oh, it's not surprising since, uh, since, uh, sheep raising is, uh, one of their, 
um, big exports, if you will, I guess. What are their what are their big things that they do down here? Because really, like you look at this land, certainly up here in the mountains, there's not much else you could do. You certainly couldn't raise crops uh, on these rugged hills. So the best you could do is hope to raise some sheep. But I haven't had lamb in a while. I would, I could I could go for some lamb. Thanks. Now you're making me hungry. <laughs> All right, so go straight ahead until you hit that archipelago, and then from the archipelago, it's a short jump to the western shore of the lake. There you should see a river opening that runs southwest. Follow the river through to a small town called Cochrane, just to the northwest of the town. is your final airport. Not a bad place to finish up your tour of Patagonia. All right, so continue looking for a river on the far side. Gonna get over this island chain here, and get over the far side, and we're looking for the town of Cochrane. And I was also reading, if you get a chance to read up on it too, I, I, when I was kind of putzing around uh, on Wikipedia and um, and Google Maps, looking at, at various parts of Patagonia, uh, there's apparently a cute little narrow gauge tourist railroad on the eastern side of the Andes, a little bit farther north from here still, but uh, it's a little little narrow gauge railroad that never really got quite finished. It was built in two halves. They never quite linked the two halves together. Now the two halves are two separate tourist railways. You can actually come down here and ride the ride the narrow gauge steam railways, but I think it's also still, from what I can tell, and it was a little bit hard to tell because a lot of the pages were in Spanish, but I, from what I can tell, it's also still an operating railroad as well um, because it's one of the only, it, it's not the only transportation links. There are roads now in these areas, but uh, it is still a transportation link as well between some of these various towns. Called, I believe it's called La, Tron La Tronquita. I think it just means the narrow road or something like that. This is all just me trying to remember as best I could what I read the other what I read the other night when I was just kind of a little bit curious and I was wanting to see wanted to kind of learn a little bit. Okay, uh, so we're just about coming over the islands here. So let's read this again from the archipelago church up to the western shoreline of the lake. There you should see a river opening you can follow that runs southwest. So here? I think it's here. And southwest, follow the river to, through to a small town called Cochran, just to the northwest of the town is your final airport. Alright, so are we over these islands yet? Uh, just about. That's just about right. 552, that's pretty good. Uh, so I wonder if it's this one here. Because it doesn't look like there's really too much. I mean, there is another river kind of right here. But I feel like this is a little bit more major, and I think I see some buildings over there. So let's let's just restart here for a second. So 3 minutes and 32 seconds to the Cochrane Airport. Less than 5 minutes to go on our Patagonia bush trip here. And what a what an epic trip it's been though. Just just going on and I get into this mode too like I really do. It's almost I hate to say like a trance, but it really is like you just get into a mode when you get going on this trip here and you're just flying the airplane. And you're just constantly your feedback loop, you're you're navigating, you're constantly monitoring the altitude. And then when you stop it's almost shocking. I think I do see. I think that is Cochrane over there. But when you when when you stop all of a sudden at the end and, and, and now you're no longer moving, it's just it's almost it's shocking because your brain is just sort of it's, it's in this mode. All right, so yeah, so this river does meander kind of here to the southwest, and I think I do see a town just around past that next hilltop there. So let's just keep it level through the turn. A little bit of back pressure in the turn because, you know, you're still a pilot. You still know how to fly straight and level around a turn. If I try, I can fly a turn without losing altitude. The trouble is I just get distracted by looking out the window too much. And as soon as I do that, as soon as I look away, my altitude control goes goes to hell. Alright, I think I see the town coming into view there. There's definitely something there. Let's see if we can spot this airport. I don't, do I even need to look at a picture of it? Is it paved? Pave strip there on the northwest side of town. Any, let's have a look. See as we come around the ridge here. Uh, I don't see yet, but just give it a second. Just give it a second. It's gonna be somewhere off on this side. Oh, that's it right there, isn't it? That's it right there. All right, probably should pull the power up too much just as I'm going over top of the ridge, but you know. <laughs> Alright, 
power back. I'm just taking some external screenshots here again so I can have something to put on my title card. And access to therapy. Hello, Captain Nabs. Hello, access to therapy. How are you? Welcome to my live stream where we are just about to do the final landing of the Patagonia Bush Trip in Microsoft Flight Simulator here. If I can get down to that runway, but I'm much too high up. So let's just see if we can't do some S turns again. Also get the full flap out there because that helps deepen the descent quite substantially. And that is the town of Cochrane. I'm not even sure if we're in Chile or if we're in Patagonia, or if we're in Chile or uh, Argentina. I'm not sure which we're in anymore. Wow, we are really quite substantially high over this runway here. I'm trying to kind of do some ass turns. Fortunately, it's a long runway. If we don't land on the first thousand feet of the runway, in this case, I think it's going to be okay. But, oh, no. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> I am so high above the threshold of this runway here. I don't know if we can pull this off. Maybe a little side slip action here today, or a little forward slip, I should say. But even that is just not quite doing it for me here. Come on. <laughs> and then I try to put in full rudder and my chair goes backwards. <laughs> uh, that's always the fun part. Okay. No, nope, we're not going to do this, are we? Nope. Okay. Go around. Unfortunately, I just was too high as I came over that ridge. Couldn't quite get down in time, so let's just come back, do a circuit, and let's do a much smoother approach the second time around here. Alright, one more lap of honor. <laughs> yeah, as long as I don't hit a mountain on the lap of honor, we're all good to go. <laughs> Oh my god, every time I look away, I'm pitching the nose up even further than before. Alright, I'm going to go to about 1500 for my downwind here. I'm just going to leave the flaps. Speed back on this downwind here. Alright, there's 1500, so let's just... Level. And let's not overspeed the flaps too much here, so we got to keep the speed back to 70 or less. speed flight, that's for sure. Trim, 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 trim. And even now, my nose, is every time I let go, it's just the nose just keeps on plummeting towards the earth still. I am still not trimmed properly here. Alright. That's okay. Sometimes you gotta know when to call it. Do push pilots carry parachutes? Um, I would say not usually. Uh, I would say never, but I would say not usually. We'd usually expect that you're going to try and find a place to put the airplane down if you don't think it's going to, if you don't think it's going to keep flying. One thing I didn't do is I didn't shift the carbine in for the go around, but it's okay because this thing actually has lots of power for the go around. It really does. All right, even that is almost enough there. far this way because I don't want to get caught on the ridge again. Alright. Carb heat is still out. Yep. Alright. Just heading towards the mountains. It's fine. Just aimed at the mountains. It's fine. Now we're still pretty high, but we okay, don't gain speed. What we'll do is we'll get another notch of flaps, and that will help with the drag. It's even get a second notch of flaps, because even coming across here, we are still pretty high, but not as high as last time. Definitely doing better than last time. Five hundred. There is still quite a few high trees and hills on this approach here, so you definitely don't want to come in too high. And we're definitely better than we were last time. is still pretty steep, and this airplane just does not want to slow down. She really does not. Just 
idle thrust and she just all I can do to kind of push her towards the ground. Oop. Found the ground. <laughs> Alright, I don't even need to necessarily taxi anywhere. I can just come to a stop right here because that's this is the end of the trip. And there it goes. Leg completed. Congratulations, bush trip is completed. And that's it. That's all I get now is back to me. You, you, you think we could do like some fireworks or something? <laughs> Something nice, at least, but uh, bush trip menu. There we go. So back to it. There it is. Los Cerros, from Los Cerros all the way to Cochrane. It was uh, 875 total miles flown. Seven hours and seven minutes was the estimated time. It was probably, for me, was closer to 11 because this, this I don't know who calculated these times, but whoever calculated these times was going, like, full speed, like, red line the whole way in that airplane. It was almost impossible to do it. So... Uh, I, yeah, I think probably more realistically, it's taken me cl closer to 11 hours to do this bush trip. But still, that was tons of fun. Now do a triple barrel roll in a 737. No, I think that's enough for me for now. I think I've done my thing. But look at how many bush trips are available here. And I don't even have all the world updates. I only have a fraction of them. Uh, Puerto Rico Memoirs. Roosevelt Roads to San Juan. That one kind of seems... Uh, with a Turbo Beaver. That one kind of already immediately has me kind of curious. Uh... Yeah, this bush trip explores Puerto Rico with a circumnavigation of the island. Beginning on the eastern tip, the journey walks clockwise around the coast, passing out the notable interiors of the flight ends at the northern coast of the capital, uh, San Juan. Well, that's kind of fun. Uh, I might want to do that one one day. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many good bush trips, and this is only a fraction of them, too. Uh, Santiago to Cuba to Havana, northeast megalopolis. I don't know if my processor can handle this going over all the mega cities of the northeast US, but uh, I did do the Swiss Northern ones. I did that one as a live stream. This is also a great one, too. Uh, we did, this was the one that uh, me and my friends were doing Breckenridge to Mariposa, Yosemite, Nevada. Uh, and this one is, again, huge. Uh, it, almost 900 miles, nine, almost 10 hours of flying. Uh, and it's got an a crazy number of legs here uh 25 legs and as you can see we only got about halfway done before we eventually kind of it, it's not that we gave up on it it's that it just sort of petered out we, we just sort of we, we stopped right we ran out of time to kind of do it we just stopped doing it so um but yeah there's just so many available so many of them could be so fun i've done part of this germany one here haiti and dominican republic um yeah, we've done some of the Aloha Hawaii one, Vancouver Island, New Guinea, just just, and this is this is just the uh, world updates I have. I don't have pretty much any of the world European world updates installed, so all of them have different ones. So it's a great way to spend some time in the sim, getting used to certain airplanes. As you can see, each one's got a different airplane, uh, and it's a great way to just see a different part of the world that maybe you're not used to. Uh, this one also seems like it's fun, Austria. start in Vienna and end at Hohenems. Uh Yeah, uh, so many beautiful landscapes that you get to see through doing these. So um, I will probably do another one of these as a live stream at some point, but not for a little while. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go back to, because it's, honestly, I'm exhausted from doing that. Just even those, those four legs we did tonight, less than, less than two hours worth of work. I'm exhausted, mentally exhausted from that. So I find that airline flying is actually less exhausting just because I'm very into it. I know it. Avalon to the Sea Ranch. This one too. Catalina to the Sea Ranch. Santa Catalina, what's southern islands? Flight visits Los Angeles, the Mojave Desert, Death Valley, the High Sierra, the Great Central Valley, and San Francisco before coming to an end on the northern coast. That seems like a lot of fun too. That really does. Baker, Shoshone, Furnace Creek, Lone Pine. That one also seems like lots of fun. Covers a good distance pretty quickly in the caravan, too. Anyways, um, I think that's enough for me for tonight, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, though. Thank you for tuning in, and I appreciate it. And I hope you guys all really enjoyed that. Uh, I, I enjoyed that, but now my mind is kind of like, my mind needs to settle down. 
I'm trying to, I'm, my mind is still mentally ready to fly an airplane and then taking myself out of that. It's, it's, it's very weird, but, um, yeah, I think that's an, I think that's enough for tonight. Tom and GT, thank you so much as always for tuning in. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for giving me some stuff to talk about during some of the, the less exciting parts of the trip. But, uh, it, it keeps, it kept me a little bit interested too. Um, I, I won't say it was too much of a distraction. I enjoyed it. So thank you very much for that. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, and uh, stay tuned to my Discord, to my Twitch, and my uh, YouTube channel. And I think that uh, I'm hopeful that next week we're going to start the next uh, the next um, chapter of A Pilot's Life. I think it's season 12 we're up to. Uh, and if I can just pull this up here, if it's going to come up here. Yeah, it's coming up. Um, do, 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 do. But yeah, I'm 99% sure that the first two legs are uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico to Dominican and back. Uh, to uh, Punta Cana specifically, actually, I should say. So let's just have a quick look here. Uh, but yeah, San Juan to Punta Cana, Punta Cana back to San Juan. And then up to Newark, Tampa, JFK. So some of the old favorites we're going to visit again. Uh, I'm also looking forward to, this is always fun, DCA. Uh, hoping for like the River Visual 1-9 in DCA. That is one of the most fun approaches to fly. Uh, interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see how the Airbus handles it. Um, but that's always that's always a super fun approach. Uh, lots of good destinations. None of them are super long this time around, which is really kind of nice. The longest ones are JFK to San Juan and uh, San Juan back to Newark. Those are kind of the longest ones, but most of them are pretty reasonable. But these two, uh, really short, 135 miles. It's it's a very short leg. It's it's like you're you're talking like 30 minutes of airtime maybe. So it, it, we're almost going to have to plan the arrival before we even take off just to make sure we have enough time to do it. So anyways, uh, that's kind of what we got coming up next for A Pilot's Life chapter or season 12, I believe it is. So uh, we'll probably try to get that in next week. No guarantees, but uh, stay tuned to the Discord. I'll post it ahead of time there, hopefully. And uh, we will see you guys all out there uh, on the Vatsim skies. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you all real soon. Take care.